Hi friends, I'm Abby and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be doing my December wrap up. So wrapping up the final month of 2023. In the month of December, in summary, I read seven books coming to a total of 2,728 pages. Five of the books were fantasy, two were sci-fi, six were adult, one was YA. And then for my star ratings, I had two five stars, one 4.5 star, three four stars and one three star, finishing off one series and continuing in three, putting my series at 24. I feel as though I've just gone straight into the stats very quickly today. I had a relatively busy December, I would say, um, and most of the reading I did in the second half of the month. I started the month by going on a trip to the French Alps for work, so that was lovely. It was very snowy. For someone that doesn't drive regularly, it was very snowy. Like, we had to put the snow chains on the car and I was not really prepared. Like, it was a, it was a lot, but we survived. <laughs> no, no colleagues were harmed in my uh, driving in the mountains. So did that. And then the week after that, I had a, another work trip to Turkey and I had a conference there. So I had a, quite a busy work trip December. Uh, and then I was back at my parents for Christmas, where I did most of my reading. Relatively busy, uh, but lovely, festive time. It is the 31st of December as of filming this. So coming into the final, final hours of 2023. So I'm just going to wrap up everything that I've read this month. The first book that I finished in December very proudly is The Bone Shard War by Andrew Stewart. This feels like a lifetime ago that I finished this because it was it was so long ago. It really was so long ago that I finished this book. So this is the third and final book in the Drowning Empire series, the first book being The Bone Shard Daughter. And this took me a long time to get to, like I'd have been intending to get to it since April when it was released and when I was sent this book from Orbit and I just hadn't. And going into it, my memories were very foggy, very, very foggy. It had been a couple of years since I'd read the second book. So I think that did impact me a little bit, but also there was a time jump in this of two years, which maybe aligned with my uh, having not read it for two years. The premise of this is we have multiple characters set across this archipelago. One of them is Lynn, who is the daughter of the Emperor, and one of them is Jovis, who is a smuggler. Uh, and there are main perspectives and there are a couple of other ones as well. And it's got a very interesting magic system as well, which uses bone shards. So uh, there is a tithe where shards are taken from behind everybody's necks. And then those shards are used to fuel these things called constructs, which can be doing very rudimentary jobs to also running parts of the government. And if your shard is in use, then that is draining the life force out of you, uh, which I find very, very interesting. Um, and I think that the magic system in general was explored really well in this. I'd say I have quite mixed thoughts on this third book. Uh, overall, I'm happy with the way that it like wrapped up. I think I enjoyed it more than I expected to, especially because I had no memories going into it. Uh, I'd watched a discussion of the second book and I was like, I have forgotten so much. And I was like, well, I'm not going to reread. I'm just going to dive in. I feel as though maybe because of the time job, it actually worked in my favour and that I was able to like settle back into the world with these characters uh, and sort of go, oh yes, I vaguely remember that. Oh yes, I vaguely remember that. Despite that like positivity and surprise that I was enjoying it and like remembering things, there was also this level of detachment I would say from it and that I wasn't ever like obsessed with the characters, obsessed with the arcs and what was going on. I'd say that it actually hasn't stuck with me very much that I read this at the beginning of the month uh, or end of November into December. And a lot of it has got quite vague already uh, that it hasn't, yeah, it, the longevity hasn't been there for it. Uh, overall, I, I am satisfied with where we got to, where the characters arcs ended. And I was happy with like the journey that we went through. But I think for me, the first book is the strongest book in the series. But if you do enjoy like a really interesting magic system world, then I would recommend the series. But um, I don't know if if this lived up to my experience of reading the first book. So this was might be like three stars of the of the month. Like it's a very sort of mixed opinion. So there's a pleasant surprise of actually enjoying it after the two year gap, but also it wasn't amazing. Okay, yeah. But I would definitely be interested in reading more from Andrew Stewart and um, seeing what she puts out next, because I do find the magic system and lore that she created really interesting. And I did like our characters. Other series that I worked on, I continued in the Skyward series and I read Evershaw, which is the third novella in the Skyward Flight section. It didn't quite get to Defiant, which was my original intention. I did really want to wrap up 
the Skyward series this month and it hasn't quite happened but I did continue in it and I did read Evershaw which is still like a 200 page novella so it's still quite long uh, but it wasn't quite as far as I wanted because I wanted to read Evershaw and Defiant. Defiant I'll get to it in January it's fine and then it's an easy win for 2024 I've already I will already have finished a series so Evershaw I think is my favorite of the novellas it felt like I was and it was much better than Cytonic as well I really enjoyed it. Skyward is a sci-fi series following the main character Spencer and her planet has always been bombarded by an alien force called the Krell and she is training with a flight team to battle the Krell and in this in these novellas we're following some of the flight team and not Spencer herself and I really enjoyed the pacing of this novella I enjoyed the character that it followed and sort of seeing the twists and turns that their lives were going through and the expansion of the world I would say or the the different a aliens that we encountered in it to keep it vague and it has made me excited to dive into Defiant. I wasn't so excited following Cytonic, that run was a bit of a, a bummer really, that it was a bit of a disappointment in the series I would say. Definitely a weak point and these other novellas have been good uh, but I feel as though this was like a return to the, not quite Skyward because that, but maybe like a return to Starsight which I'd say is like the full 4.5 star my opinion so I'd say that this one's probably like a four star really I really enjoyed it and I think it, it was an interesting trajectory that it went on that expanded the world expanded our characters gave them more dimension and yeah it was really interesting to follow so I, I would recommend these novellas as a path as, as necessary reading in the Skyward series I do think you probably you need to read them I haven't read Define yet but I think these are pretty core to the series that if you skip them you might be a little bit confused about the events that are going on in the rest of the series. I also continued in the A Fate of Wrath and Flame series by reading A Curse of Blood and Stone by K. Tucker. This is the second book in this fantasy romance series. This one again I enjoyed it. It wasn't it didn't like stand out for me in the month. This is a fantasy romance series following a main character, Romeria, who at the beginning of the first book gets like sucked into this fantasy world and she is suddenly in the place of somebody who has just murdered the king and queen in this world and so she is in a very precarious position and she's like but I didn't know anything about this because obviously she is from our world so it's a very interesting like portal fantasy in that way so yeah I do think the magic system is a little bit convoluted but overall I am enjoying it and ex enjoying exploring Ramirez's powers that she is she she has and the different magic systems within this world so I, I am enjoying that there's a lot of traveling in this book um, and traveling to a destination so it felt a little bit like a filler book because like we had the rising action at the end of book one and then this one there's the aftermath of that and sort of the traveling to get to a destination and so it really did feel as though the whole book there is like this journey that the characters are going on if, if you really like journey stories then this is the book to read but so there was a point where I was like I'd like a little bit more than just the journey like I get it we're, tra we're, we're journeying we're meeting these characters there's definitely development in our main protagonist and the love interest like there's definitely that development I think the the surrounding cast were expanded and I enjoyed them uh, and it, the different the different characters that were brought into this I liked that it is multi-perspective so we have both the female and the male perspectives in this I, but I do feel like this was a lot of setup getting us to a point so that hopefully the third book then delivers with where we've been building towards um, I know that it's a four book series so I know that the third book's not going to like conclude anything but this did feel a little bit fillery in places but and still I still really enjoyed it and liked where we went with like the magic of the world but it didn't like well me some of my favorites uh these were five stars i uh continued in the emily wilde series so i reread on audio emily wilde's encyclopedia fairies which i read and loved in january and then i read for the first time emily wilde's map of the other lands which i was thankfully sent by orbit yes i did my reread uh this in this world we're following emily wilde who is an academic and she has gone to these remote nordic islands to investigate the fairies there as she's writing an encyclopedia on all the fairies within the world and we follow her as she meets the locals there as well as the fairy folk there and it's very cosy and then her academic rival Wendell Bambleby arrives and there is some romantic tension between them and I really enjoyed like the fairies in this and uh, the world and it's written in a sort of diary format Emily Wilde is very she's not very personable I would say uh, she's quite insular and she's not very good with people so I listened to this for my reread I'd read it physically at the very beginning of the year 
uh, and it lived up it lived up to my memories of it and it was a very very fun experience revisiting this I don't normally revisit like the same book twice in a year but I I, I just felt like it. I had the audiobook because it was on like a, I like a buy one get one free audio audible sale. It was in that and I was like, oh, well, I'll get this one as my free one. So why not? Yeah, it was really fun revisiting this world. Uh, and the day that I'd like started this, I was, or I was like midway through coming towards the end, I got this in the post from Orbit. Uh, so I was like, oh, perfect timing. So then I dived into uh, the second book which comes out on the 18th of January although I did see this in bookshops already uh, I went bookshopping in Oxford and Blackwells in Oxford already had their copies of this out so although it's not meant to be out for like a few weeks time for a few weeks it is already out in the wild in December I really enjoyed the sequel it continued to live up to my memories to, to my feelings on the first book it continued in the same vein I enjoyed the destination that we went to so in this one we are visiting Austria and the Alps and I mean I really like the mountains I really like the Alps uh, I don't haven't been to Austria much although I am going in April with work to Austria so uh, maybe I'll take this book with me and like try and get a photo shoot of it there but that might be challenging because all of my colleague's going to be there so that might be a little bit awkward yeah I really enjoyed seeing the Austrian Alps and that setting and uh continuing to explore the relationship between Emily and Wendell and the different sort of different fairies that we meet and the whimsical fairy tale nature of this whole story so I love this I love this series um I need the next one I feel as though I think it's meant to be a trilogy but I could just read more and more books in this life I could just keep reading it like Heather Fawcett, please just keep writing these books because I adore them. <laughs> Another book that I read this month was Upon a Frosted Star by M.A. Kuznia. This is a Great Gatsby um, meets Swan Lake retelling and reimagined. It's not really a retelling, reimagining. It's inspired from. There's a very ballet, very fairy tale esque atmosphere to it. It's quite historical with more of like a uh, magical realism twist to it. So it's not ex explicitly like fantasy, but I mean our main character just turned into a swan continuously it was quite it was quite dark and slow moving and we're following Forster who attends these parties which are hosted by our character Odetta it is their love story uh, their tragic love story I would say this had the same whimsical writing style that I enjoyed in Midnight in Everwood but it was a, it was slower it was darker it was more tragic yeah, I could really see the the comparisons to both The Great Gatsby and Swan Lake uh, that our main character is, or the female character, is turning into a swan continuously. And our male main character, who is actually the protagonist of this story, that everything is pretty much told through uh, the eyes of our male main character, which was an interesting choice, I would say. I would have liked, I think, a bit more from Adetta's point of view. We do get some of her perspective, but I would have liked more. And I could really see The Great Gatsby's the Great Gatsby influence within him and the way that he um, he is very similar to what is that main character in The Great Gatsby? I can't remember his name, but the per the protagonist of The Great Gatsby, I could see as him, if you've read The Great Gatsby. And there's sort of parties in the opulence as well of that era, of that sort of 1920s era. I would say it is slow. It, it is slow, which I didn't find in uh, Midnight in Everwood. Uh, so Midnight in Everwood is definitely like my favourite out of the two because of the slowness of this, especially through the middle. Uh, but it was definitely intriguing. Like I, I was interested to see um, where it got to and where it was going and everything that was happening with this. But it was not, I don't think it's, it's not any fair of the way Midnight in Everwood was, but it is like the perfect wintry read. Like it's very atmospheric for the winter. So if you are after a wintry snowy read, then I would recommend this. It's not like Christmas specific, but more, in the wintry theme. And then the final book that I finished in December is Exhalation by Ted Chiang. So I read this just like gradually over the last week. My intention was to read this when I went to France for work because I was like, oh, I can dip in and out of this because I don't think I'm gonna read very much. I didn't read anything. I did not read anything when I was in France, like literally nothing. Did not open this book, but I did still want to read it. So I have read it gradually over the past week. So like in between reading Emily Wilde and Evershaw, I've dipped in and out of these short stories having finished it this morning. Uh, and I really enjoyed this. I really, really enjoyed this. I've put this as like four stars on Goodreads right now, but maybe it's gonna be like four point, I think this is more like 4.5. Uh, I'm gonna see how it sticks with me. I think some of these stories are gonna stick with me more than others. I've already read um, Stories of Your Life and others by Ted Chiang and like that I feel as though these stories are great 
uh, thought experiments, but they really get you thinking. I found these ones so engaging. I was so interested to see how, where it was going to go uh, with each of these stories. I was like, where is this going? Where is this going? Each of them takes like a, th a theme and then it runs with it. Um, but I always found the plots interesting as well, that it wasn't just the theme that intrigued me. It didn't like get my brain just thinking. I was also in invested in our characters. So I think he did a really good job with combining themes and characters and plot through all of these. I think they were all like the perfect length that everything was well paced. Everything was just very, very intriguing. Very, very intriguing. I was definitely invested as I continue to move through this. And I, I don't think there was a bad story. I don't think there was a bad story. It combines elements of like technology with fantasy and sci-fi elements, uh, looking at a future, but a realistic future. For, well, okay. Some of them are a future and a realistic future. Some of them are not. Some of them are more historical. Like there's different, there's different elements through all of them. But I think that these were all really, really interesting. Very well done. And I would love another collection by Ted Chiang because I really enjoyed both of the ones that I've read and would very much recommend these, especially as like things to break up other books that you could like read one of these in between reading other books and then suddenly you finished another whole book, which is pretty much what I did. But I would definitely, definitely recommend this. It's been, yeah, it was a great way to end my year, I would say, like a, a strong end to the year to finish on a high. And I'm going to see how this sticks with me because I think depending on how it sticks, I could like increase that rating. Like it's going to be a four minimum, but I think if it stays, then it might be creep up a little bit because I really thoroughly enjoyed this and I'm very relieved because I bought this book in New York as like a book to come home from that trip and the other book that I bought there was was Engines of Empire which was a bit of a disappointment so I'm like unhauling that one which I'm sad about because it was like a memento book so I'm very relieved that one of my memento books is staying with me and staying on my shelves and that I really really enjoyed it uh, so I'd really recommend this especially if you enjoy the short story format if you have enjoyed Ken Liu's short stories as well I think that these are sort of in the same vein uh, this is not as sad as Ken Liu's ones Ken Liu's ones can definitely get your heart your, your emotions going a bit more I think uh, I've only read the Paper Menagerie ones I haven't read the Hidden Girl ones yet but if you like those then I think you'd like this and vice versa so I would definitely recommend this uh, so there's everything that I finished I have very much recently just started a couple of other ones so I have just started my reread of Crescent City neither of these are going to be finished by the end of the year because I'm literally on like chapter three so I'm literally 24 pages in so very much just started this uh, but I do intend to get to this in January. Uh, so I just started the audiobook of this one and I have just started reading Yumi and the Nightmare Painter. So I am 36 pages into this. So again, not very far, but really enjoying this as well. So those are two things that you are likely to see in January's wrap up because they have just been started at the very end of December. So that is everything that I managed to read in December. I'm quite happy that I managed to get to seven books that I thought it could have been a lot worse, especially by the midway point in the month when I'd read like two books. Uh, so I did manage to like really pick the pace up in the second half um, and get a few more things finished by the end of the year. Let me know how your reading in December went and I hope you had a lovely festive time, uh, whether you were with friends or with family and that we all have a great start to 2024. And thank you so much for watching and I will see you in my future videos. Bye.